Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 20 of the chapter The Solid State. We have been discussing the electrical properties of solids. In the previous video, we talked about the electrical conductance of semiconductors. Semiconductors belong to the 14th group. For example, you have silicon and germanium which act as semiconductors. Please uh, refer to the previous video if you do not understand or if you do not follow what I am telling you. And in the previous video, I also told you that these semiconductors do not conduct electricity uh, enough to be useful. So to make the semiconductor useful to us, we usually dope it with an impurity. And based on the impurities that they are doped with, we have two types of semiconductors. That is N-type semi semiconductor, that is negative type and P-type semiconductor. Or you can pronounce it as semiconductor too. In this video, we are going to be talking about the applications of the N-type and the P-type of semiconductors. Now, these are listed a few uh, applications. The first is diode. A diode is made by the combination of an N-type of semiconductor and a P-type of semiconductor. They are fused, they are joined together to form a diode. So, it is a combination of N-type and P-type semiconductor and a diode is used as a rectifier. Now, I'm sure you study this in physics also. So, in chemistry, we do not cover much of this. You will be studying about diodes, transistors, solar cells, more in uh, your physics. So, I'll just be telling you what these are and how these semiconductors are used. But the electrical part or the uh, physics part of it, you will be studying in your physics chapters. So, the first use of N-type and P-type semiconductors is in the formation of a diode, which is a combination of N and P-type of semiconductor and a diode is used as a rectifier. Transistors now, transistors are actually a sandwich structure. It, it is made by the combination of uh, one type of uh, semiconductor san sandwiched between the other type of semiconductor. So, these are made by sandwiching a layer of one type of semiconductor between two layers of the other type of semiconductor. Like you, in a sandwich, you have a bread, slice of bread, then you have a, a, whatever your omelette, and then you put a, uh, another slice of bread on top of it, or a patty, and you put another slice over it. So, that's your sandwich. So, the same thing is if you have, so you can have two types of transistors, the NPN where the two slices are negative N type of semiconductors and the patty or the omelette is the P type of semiconductor or it could be the other way around that the two slices could be the P type and they could be sandwiching the N type of semiconductor. So transistors are made up of three layers, two layers are of one type and the one that is being sandwiched is the other type. So you can have NPN type of transistors or you can have PNP type of transistors. So these are made by sandwiching a layer of one type of semiconductor between two layers of the other type of semiconductor. NPN and PNP type of transistors are used. What are transistors used for? What do you use a transistor for? You use it to detect or to amplify sound or radio, radio waves. So the transistors are used to detect or amplify radio or sound or audio signals. The next application is in solar cells. Solar cells are nothing but a photodiode. Photo means which is activated by light. And it's a diode which is activated. You know what a solar cell does? A solar cell is used to convert light energy into electrical energy. And that is the solar cell is actually a diode. And it is a photodiode that can convert, which is sensitive to light. So it can convert light energy into electrical energy. So moving on here. As I told you that semiconductors are elements of group 14. And they are tetravalent. They form four bonds. If you remember, we made that structure where you have silicon and silicon forming four bonds with four neighboring atoms. So they usually have the structure of diamond, 
and that's why these crystals would form a diamond has uh, carbon atoms which are arranged in tetrahedral fashion and a network of these tetrahedral uh, carbon atoms they expand to form the diamond crystal similarly the silicon and germanium semiconductors also have kind of a diamond kind of a structure in the crystal so when you have these semiconductors we also realize that semiconductors are not good enough unless they are doped with an impurity and what were we doping it with when we doped the semiconductor or silicon or germanium with uh, group 15 elements we found that it had group 15 elements had one electron more so that electron would occupy some interstitial space and therefore we call it the n type of semiconductor and when we doped it with group 13 elements there was one electron less therefore a hole was created which appeared to be positive so we called it the p type of semiconductor just revising what we did now this gave the scientists an idea if you can dope the semiconductor with another element which is going to enhance its semiconductivity can we not simply use uh, you know other elements which may be uh, kind of they may simulate the uh, silicon or the germanium crystals or the semiconductors uh, in such a way that although silicon and, and uh, germanium are not actually there these other elements have an average valency of four after all silicon and germanium have valencies of four so if we could have groups of or com compounds which would have an average valency of four and they form crystals similar to uh, silicon germanium or uh, diamond then we could simulate the semi semiconductor such simulations were possible so semiconductors could be made by mixing elements so a combination of elements from groups other than group 14 so we wanted the average to be four so what could we do? We took, if we did not take group 14, we did not take silicon at, or germanium at all. And we took an element from group 13 and an element from group 15. And we combined them. This has one electron less and the group 15 element has one electron extra. On the whole, if you, if you take equal number of atoms of both, the average valency, this has a valency of 3, this has a valency, this has 5 electrons, this has 3 electrons, average would be 4 electrons, so it could be used to simulate. So that kind of a thing was done. So if the combination of elements from groups other than group 14 can simulate the group 14 semiconductors, the combination has an average valency of 4. For example, group 13 and 15 could be combined. For example, in indium, IN is indium and SB is stibium or antimony. So indium, stibi uh, uh, antimonide or stibiide, indium, antimonide, aluminum and phosphorus. Aluminum is group 13, phosphorus is group, group 15. So aluminum, phosphide or gallium, group 13, arsenic, group 15 so gallium arsenide these were the combinations that were made and they had if you took an equal number of atoms of both they would have an average valency of four and they could simulate the 14th group semiconductors and it has been found that one of these that is gallium arsenide is a semiconductor which is which has an extremely fast response to electric current which means that it really enhances it really makes the semiconductor uh, almost close to a conductor very useful so the gallium arsenide semiconductors were uh, much more sensitive to electricity and therefore the gallium arsenide semiconductor specially has revolutionized the design of semiconductor devices instead of using pure 14th group elements now such combinations are more popular because you're not going for pure substances you're just mixing them and making in right proportions and getting semiconductors which are even better than the group 14 ones so now you could also have group 14 Mm. group 14 and 16 doesn't sound right it has to be group 
12 and 16 because 14 is not what we want. So group 12 and group 16. Now group 12 and group 16, this has two electrons in its outermost shell and group 16 elements have six electrons in their outermost shell. If you have equal number of these, this has two less electrons, that has two more electrons, the average will still be 14. So you could have semiconductors from group 12 and group 16 also. So what is happening is that you have group 14 here. Let's, let me draw it here. Group 14 are the semiconductors you have. Group 15 has one electron extra. Group 16 has two, two electrons extra. This is group 13 and group 12. So we can make semiconductors using 13 and 15 or we could make semiconductors using 12 and 16. Now the difference here is that in group 12 and group 16 there is a difference of two electrons less than 14, two electrons more than 14 but actually a difference of four electrons and a distance of four groups. The closer the elements are in their groups their electronegativities will be kind of similar. There is a gradation. There is a you studied the periodic properties of elements. As you keep moving across a group, the electronegativities change. The electronegativities on the whole increase. So what happens here is the greater the difference, the greater is the difference in the electronegativities of the elements. So that also factors in. But let us first talk of what happens. Group 12 and group 16 can also be averaging out to give you uh, an average valency of 14. Therefore, they can also act as semiconductors. Examples are zinc sulfide, cadmium sulfide, cadmium selenide, uh, mercury telluride. In these bonds, in these uh, compounds, the bonds are not perfectly covalent. Naturally, the greater the difference in electronegativity, the greater will be the ionic character. So these compounds that are formed will not be purely covalent. They would have some ionic character. And the ionic character will depend on the, uh, the difference in their electronegativities. So these bonds are not perfectly covalent. Ionic character would depend on the difference in their electronegativities. And of course, the greater the difference in the electronegativity, the greater the ionic character, the better conductor it will be. But this time, the conduction will not only be by electrons, but it will also be as ions because uh, the ionic character is more. So both factors would be, both tendencies would be there. So this was the conductivity of semiconductors and the applications of NNP type of semiconductors. Coming to conductivity, you have transition metals. The transition metal oxides, sometimes they show conductivity as good as metals. Now we're not talking about semiconductors. We're now talking of compounds that can act as proper conductors. So tellurium oxide, Chromium oxide, rhenium oxide, they behave as metals. TiO, CrO2, ReO3, they actually act as metals, which means not as semiconductors, but proper metals. ReO3 is like metallic copper. Copper is a very good conductor of electricity. You know, in your homes, you have copper wires. So that is because copper is really good in conducting both electricity and heat. So... Rhenium oxide is like metallic copper, not only in its conductivity, it also looks like copper. In its appearance also, it is like copper. Then you have oxides like VO, vanadium oxide, vanadium dioxide, vanadium trioxide, titanium trioxide. All of these, they show conductivity and I mean, they sh fall between conductivity and insulation. Like they can be conductors or they can be insulators under different conditions and what is the condition at different temperatures they behave differently so these oxides like vanadium vo vanadium oxide vanadium dioxide vanadium trioxide titanium trioxide they can act as metals at certain temperatures and non-metals or sorry they can act as metallic conductors at certain temperatures and absolute insulators at lower temperatures so their properties Conduction properties depend on the temperature. 
So this was about the electrical properties of solids. And with this, we, I'll be ending this video. The next topic that we will be taking up would be the magnetic properties, which will also be the final uh, topic of this chapter. So if you wish to watch the other videos of this chapter, please click the link that appears on top of the video. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.